All right, joining me now to discuss potential action against the Syrian regime is Republican Congressman from Illinois, Adam Kinzinger. Uh, Congressman, you and I have talked about this problem for far too long now. Do me a favor, first tell me what you think the role of the president is right now. What should he do? Well, I, you said it right in the lead up. The reality is, we have to answer a question. Are we just going to be a collection of people that all we care about is business and all we care about is economic growth? Are we going to be a country that stands for something? Are we going to be a country which is, you know, for hundreds of years has said that we fight for a bigger cause and a bigger purpose than just our own material goods? And if the answer to that is yes, we're going to be a nation that's for something a little bit bigger than just ourselves. We have no choice. God has blessed us with this, you know, frankly, amazing military, this vast amount of wealth and the ability to hold evil people accountable when they do evil things. And so I think the president is absolutely correct in saying there's going to be a harsh response. And I hope there is a harsh response. It doesn't mean we're intervening in the middle of the Syrian civil war. That's difficult, yeah. uh, even though I would be supportive of Assad dying in that civil war war. The reality is we have to make the cost of using chemical weapons far exceed any benefit somebody like Bashar al-Assad gets, and I think that's what yeah. the president's going to do. Well, pretend President Trump is watching right now. Uh, I, I think he has a real opportunity to lead in ways that others before him have not. So if you had a direct line to him right now, what would you say to persuade him to become the leader he, he says he is? Well, it'd be very easy. It's, you know, Mr. President, this is your opportunity to stand for something big, to stand up for uh, not international norms, but just for humanity, uh, to stand up and say that the cost is going to exceed any benefit gain so that any time Bashar al-Assad or Russia or Iran thinks about using chemical weapons, they have to take into account that they're going to lose a significant amount of their military infrastructure. So uh, I think it's the right thing for the president to do here. I would encourage him not to get distracted by some of these other issues when something so important is happening yeah. like this. And, uh, and you know, we just, we, we, our hats are off to the uh, men and women of the military that are, I think, are going to be called upon to do this uh, sometimes very difficult thing that we don't like to do, sure. but that we have a unique opportunity and responsibility to carry out. Okay, uh, follow me once more to your colleagues in Congress who are advising against military action. Um, what do you say to them who might be afraid that some of their constituents are very war weary? Well, Senator Murphy, who said basically the strike seemed to make things worse, I, I'm blown away by that. I, I, I'd love to see him point to one piece of evidence that the strike a year ago made anything worse. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Mike Lee is a good guy, but you know the idea that the president has to come to Congress for every military action. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the what's the line now? If the president decides to move an airplane from Germany to France, does he need to come to Congress? The reality is, we're not commander in chief. Our job is to provide funds for battle and to declare if a state of war exists, but the Commander-in-Chief has a lot of leverage otherwise, and this does not fall under the requirement of Congress to act, because once the Congress gets to decide whether or not to act, I'd obviously vote to give the President the authority to do it, but it interjects politics in something that we should be much bigger than at this point. And finally, uh, to, the, to the American people, uh, some of whom would say this has nothing to do with us, please explain what the stakes here are for those of us here in the U.S. The stakes are massive. So not since World War I have we accepted the use of chemical weapons on the battlefield, and that's saved countless lives. Uh, we've actually held very strong to that. If we allow this to go unpunished, for all intents and purposes, the chemical weapons ban will be over because we'll show that we're not serious about inflicting that. Not to mention the fact that if you think terrorism is a problem, Bashar al-Assad is incubating terrorism all over Syria right now with the way he treats people. That's why you have the growth of ISIS in Syria. It's not because of the United States. It's because of Bashar al-Assad in Syria. So these brutal acts he's doing against his people are not going to win him some massive victory. Victory, but it is going to create a whole new generation of terrorists, and that's going to affect us right here at home. For sure. Uh, we're going to talk about the UN and their role in this in the next segment, but while I have you, um, any body that entrusts Russia and Syria to police Russia and Syria <laughs> should not be taken seriously. I, it's like the fox guarding the hen house. Uh, when will we stop putting our faith and trust in the UN to stop a humanitarian crisis from worsening? Well, I think we need to do that now. I, need, I think we need to understand that they're not going to act. And it's not necessarily that some of the members don't want to, but the Russians can veto everything right. and do veto everything. So I think Nikki Haley's done a good job of shaming Russia yeah. and saying exactly what they're doing. Uh, but look, we cannot put our faith in the United Nations. Uh, I don't think it's ever shown that when it comes to an aggressive action like this, that it's a successful place to be. Uh, nope.
Congressman Kinzinger, I really appreciate you coming on today, Anytime. and I appreciate your fighting for this. You bet. Thanks.